So I want to talk about Palestine um, and Israel. And I, I, there's really no good way for me to talk about this, but I'm very concerned that war, like all out war is going to, is going to come to this, is, is going to come to, to Palestine. And, you know, I, I see signs constantly of, of tensions rising on, on all sides. And, I, and I'm terrified that there's going to be a, a real war that goes on. And, and because Palestine doesn't really have an armed force, that this would become, you know, a terrible, bloody guerrilla war um, fraught with, with terrorism and, and all sorts of, of, of heinous acts. And so here's, here's kind of my evidence for why I think this is coming, right? I don't just want to, you know, I, I don't just want to kind of put that negative energy into the world. Um, but we've seen the most extreme, uh, the most extreme right-wing government in Israel that we've ever had. Likud is flirting with uh, genocidal language openly. Um, they are being led by people who don't think Palestinians are human beings and have said so publicly. Um, there, uh, there is um, active moves to concentrate power in the legislature uh, and to create more um, and to have more explicit actions in terms of giving land to Israeli settlers. Now, speaking of Israeli settlers, in the past couple of years, there's been an incredible incursion of uh, Israeli settlers going to lands that are that are Palestine. Um, claiming homes that they don't own. This was especially true in Sheikh Jarrah. Um, but also, you know, you see in these communities where uh, Palestinians are have rocks being thrown at them. Um, be, there's, there's murders by settlers who are being allowed to, uh, who are being allowed to essentially kill these Palestinians and get away with it. Um, you don't hear a lot about prosecutions of Israeli settlers who, who kill Palestinians. Um, they have increased access to weaponry and you know when the Palestinians attempt to fight back to to defend themselves, the Israeli military, who is incredibly well armed uh, and well funded, and that's in huge part thanks to the United States, who who's kind of backing this this um, these these terrible acts. You know they they come down super hard on the Palestinians, and and people are getting murdered every day, and you know those tensions are kind of normal, but we're seeing that there was an attack on um, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is incredibly important to all Muslims, but specifically to the Palestinians, right, who are supposed to own that land. Um, and, um, you know, and so people are getting pushed to the edge and, and Palestinians have been, has been, have been fighting back in the ways that they know how, but they are being really, you know, outmatched by the incredible might and power of the IDF. And they're being ambushed by Israeli settlers who are, you know, be, who are violent towards them. Um, and so what happens? You, you, you take away any legitimate means that uh, the Palestinians have to, to defend themselves peacefully. And by the way, one of the ways that, that they have done this is that Israel has taken this away from the Palestinians is to, to, to essentially rig Israeli courts um, so that the, the deeds, the legal documents that Palestinians have for their homes are not valid in Israeli courts. And, and it has been difficult for Palestinians to prove that they own any land at all. So settlers are, are stealing their home and their land. And when you remove the ability to fight back peacefully and you make it so that their representatives in the Knesset are not really functionally able to do anything, you enable and perhaps perpetuate terrorism because you think to yourself, well, I, you know, I tried doing it peacefully. I tried protesting. You know, we tried holding these massive funerals. We tried praying. And every time we protest, we get murdered. So we have to take matters into our own hands. And that's super scary. And an example of this having happened recently was there was, and I don't remember the name of the synagogue, and I apologize for that, but there was, there was a, a mass shooting in a, a synagogue in Jerusalem um, that was believed to be perpetuated by a Palestinian terrorist. And so we are on a terrible co collision path. And obviously, you know, Palestinians don't have their own army necessarily, not like the Israelis do. 
but you're going to start to see this lashing out. So whether you whether you call it a war or you, whether you call it an an, um, an insurrection or a rebellion or whatever, there's going to be a violent confrontation between Palestinians and Israelis, and I'm really nervous that it's coming sooner rather than later. Now, look, in my heart of hearts, I want to believe that there will be a peaceable solution of some kind. But at the same time, I just I see constantly what's happening and I see what the rhetoric is like and I see how the Palestinians have no real ability to gain peace after these things keep happening to them. And as I said earlier, you will eventually push them to to terrorism, to assassinations, to to anything to try and make their position a stronger one, right? And so I don't want anyone to get hurt and I don't want anyone to get killed, but we cannot continue to live in a world where the Israeli government, the Israeli settlers, and the Israeli military constantly um, make the lives of the Palestinians worse or take away their rights or murder them in cold blood and get away with all that and there be no recourse whatsoever because eventually you will spur a violent response. And, you know, there are Palestinians in exile who sit in, in, in high up places in other um, governments in the region. Israel has never had a good relationship with its neighbors. And so who knows if, if there is a war and it becomes something truly terrible, will other nations step in? By the way, Egypt is a huge ally of the United States. They receive tons of money from the United States and they have one of the largest military thanks to our money. Does Egypt decide to get involved to protect the Palestinians? What about Jordan? What about Iraq? Who knows, right? And I, I don't, you know, what about Lebanon, right? Hezbollah still has a huge grip on power there. So I'm just super worried that we're going to see a war there and it's going to be worse than what we've seen before because the the politics and the rhetoric and all that has just changed. You know, we, we're used to seeing kind of, um, what was the last major operation called? Um, something Edge. Uh, I can't think of what it was called. But, there was, you know, we've had these incursions in Palestinian territory in the past and they've been brutal and violent. Um, and there's been condemnation, but not by the United States, right? So we in the US, our government is is moving us towards potentially a situation that we are going to severely regret allowing to happen. Um, and for all those reasons, I'm just really terrified that there's going to be a real war there, and it's going to get bad. Um, and so I hope it doesn't happen. But I'm just, I'm looking out at the world, and I'm seeing what's happening. And I can't help but be afraid that war is coming quickly. Thank you so much for watching this video from Let Them Eat Bread. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Twitch and on Facebook where announcements about our page are kept. We make videos every week and you can find all of our videos at youtube.com at sign Let Them Eat Bread. Thanks again and see you next time.